Greetings and welcome to Smartwatch Ticks. We're a YouTube channel on the web at smartwatchticks.com. And today we're going to answer that burning question for you. One way or the other, should you buy the Cospet Prime or the Thor 5 Pro? Both of them are awesome watches and I get asked all the time, which one is the best Android smartwatch? It's down to these two, folks, for various reasons most of you know. But if you're really looking to buy an Android watch, well, here you go. Uh, this is what they look like on. Let's start with the Prime. It's a little bit bigger. Got a good size screen, really nice bezel. It's got the cameras on the side, front facing, and there's a little side one that shoots out over your hand as well. The Thor 5 Pro has the camera in the front on the top of the bezel and likewise has one on the side, exact same side, shooting out over your hand if you wear it on your left hand. The uh, bands are totally different though. The Prime has removable bands that are TPU and relatively wide. The Thor 5 Pro, on the other hand, is using a leather band. Mm -hmm. This one's in brown, it's also in black, with a TPU backside, breathability, and it's a bit narrower. You see that? Probably 20, 22 millimeters. Check the specs on that. Both of them have the similar type of um, dark reflective bezel around them. The Prime is flat, I mean, totally flat. You can see the reflection there. And the uh, Thor 5 Pro has a bit tapered and then a little edge that bumps down over to the glass. So your finger is just kind of right on the edge of it. This one is a straight shoot straight across. You notice the watch face on here? This is one of the new creations from Alrod. Thanks, Alrod. Awesome work, guy. This is... Um, the new active touch or complications capable faces. And yes, both of them support the ability to have watch faces that you can touch an active spot and go into whatever is programmed behind it. And folks are programming a lot of different things these days. Here's a heart rate. This one's being a little picky. There we go. Uh, which while we're here, we'll see we have a green diode on the back on this one on the side. I'll put my finger on that one here. It's flashing a little bit, looking for human contact. And I'll put my finger on there. Now, I didn't start them at exactly the same time, so we can't really tell which one's going to land first. But they both go through doing the heart rate check. Um, at, obviously, the um, Prime came in first. Now, I got one heart beating down both arms, so the heart rate should be identical. But as we know, heart rate is a nebulous thing. There's heart rate variability between each beat is different. So they are honing in to a good um, number. The uh, larger screen on the Prime, of course, has bigger numbers uh, overall, uh, but you do get your summary over time, date and time of when you had your uh, last set of heart rate data. So that's the same on both of them pretty much. Uh, and, and that special watch face. And now, and now the public unveiling. Are you ready? Check this out. Check this out. Again from Alrod, the first time we have seen it on Android smartwatches. True animation. Yeah. Yeah. Are you surfing this one? Yeah, just try and see where it loops. You can't. It's amazing. Really good work. Um, again, Alrod, I'll have links in the show notes to his stuff. You can go over and check it out. And this points out one of the major differences between the two watches. The Thor 5 Pro has a little flat tire. Bet you didn't even notice that till just now, right? Yeah, yeah, it's not really that obvious or obnoxious, but it is there. It's a different type of a screen altogether. This one is full round. Uh, you can see the tick marks are going all the way around the edge. So that's a difference to consider on buying these. When it comes to the fitness, this one doesn't go over any further. This one does. You have this fitness section here. Now, both of them have the actual fitness app. Uh, it's just you have that little extra thing you can do over here. But if you come down and find the fitness app, which is right there, and likewise on this one, 
heart rate and fitness, and we go into it, you'll see that we're in the same section that you were in if you went over here. Now here's where there's another big difference between the two. We're in the fitness uh, program. This one, the Prime, integrates with GPS. When you come over here, here's results from my last activities. And there's a third tab that says Use Positioning, which activates the GPS so that your distance apps like outdoor running, walking, and cycling are giving you the best overall data for your distance because it's based on true GPS readings. Here, I've got my uh, activity, but I don't have any uh, access to GPS. You can see it too when you actually activate these things. You hit go, and this one jumps right in. This one said it was trying to acquire GPS, and now it blinks and it starts going. You notice the location sir, uh, uh, icon is blinking. Of course, I'm not getting any data because I'm not moving. And I've, I'm, I'm touching the heart rate there. So anyway, that's that's kind of flaky. I'm, not, I'm taking my finger off for right now to show you. If I go over here now, this one says long over, which means you have to press and hold to get it to stop. And then you can save or delete it. This one, the original, you just see the word finish and you can save it or delete it. That's a big drawback if you're into fitness uh, for the Thor 5 Pro. If that's not something you're going to work with, you can buy this and wait because most of these are getting that updated capability through a firmware update. But it is present on the Prime for fitness. Okay, what else we want to talk about? Well, how about battery? Uh, not much I can show you on that, but I can certainly tell you that uh, the battery in the Prime is really good. This is the best battery I've ever seen on a uh, Android smartwatch. I don't have actual data for you on exactly how long it lasts because it's all different considerations of what you got to go through, um, you know, to determine how long you're going to use it under what uh, conditions. But I can tell you that in general, it's lasting at least one and a half, if not two times longer than the batteries on any other watch, including the Thor 5 Pro. But I can tell you something about the battery in this one when we move into another factor that people use to decide. And that's on um, the ambient display or always on, or they sometimes call it always time. You notice down here on this one, there's an entry in display inside of settings. It's not on this one called always time. If I turn that on, which I don't have here, come back to the watch face. There, it went off. It's doggone it. It's going too fast for me. Come back. Come on. There, we're on the watch face. When this one turns off, it goes black. When this one turns off, if you have always time activated, it goes to there. So if you're walking around with your watch and maybe you twist it and maybe you see the time and it takes a few seconds to come on or you this one, you can uh, actually wear it, glance at the time and be on your way. It's always on. Beautiful. Something you'd want on any watch, right? I mean, after all, that's the main word in the, in the name, smart watch. It's a watch first. Well, that's all fine and dandy, but it comes with some uh, liabilities as well. First of all, you can't adjust the brightness on this. It's a little too bright at night, and it's a little too dim in the day. With this, uh, with this one, with the standard one on either of them, you can actually adjust the brightness however you want. And I have a special thing called display brightness installed that lets me adjust the brightness right from the screen. And uh, if you haven't learned about that yet, you'll hear about it in just about any Android watch review I give you. Um, because it's part of it. And I have it installed on this one as well. It's just a little slider that you can uh, you can add. But when you're in the always time or always on mode, it's not adjustable. Second thing is you can't change it. It's just this one watch face. That's all you're going to get. You don't get anything here. Here you have the option, but it's that one watch face. And thirdly, and this is most important, are you listening? Pay attention now. The battery life is horrible when you have this turned on. I've done multiple tests and a full charge drained down to about 10% takes five hours when you have it just in this mode with nothing else going on. No Wi-Fi, no cellular, not watching movies, not even turning it on except 
once every now and then to check to see what the power level is. And it drains it down in five hours. So a discriminating factor on which one you want, if you really want to have always on time on your arm, this is the only one that's going to do it. You won't get that on the Prime. There's a few other watches that do it as well, but this is the one between the two we're comparing. But the trade-off is you got bad battery life. If you're going to charge your watch every day, every four hours, uh, then this is fine. But if you want a watch that's going to last a long time, the battery life is much better on the, um, the Cost Pet uh, Prime, right? I'm <laughs> getting so confused. Okay, so we were talking about uh, fitness and stuff. And uh, where are we? What else would we like to talk about on these watches? How about camera? That's another issue. A couple of things to say about camera as we get over here. Um, there's resolution and there's zoomability. Oh, different color. There we go. And there's... Um, yeah, okay, I'm looking at the side. Am I looking at the side here on both of them? Am I? Yeah, 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 okay. Uh, and I don't know. I lost my trend of thought. It'll come back. <laughs> Let's just show you. Okay, wow, the top one, it looks much more flesh-colored. I don't know what that's all about. The bottom one is just kind of funky. So I'm going to take a couple of pictures. There's one on this one, and... There's one on that one. And I want to show you the actual images now. And this is using the side camera, right? So when we go into details, we can tell that on the Prime, it's a 2448 by 3264, which is a 5 mega. What do you get when you multiply that out? 5 or 8, something like that, right? I know, I'm not being totally accurate, but you know, just multiply them. I think this is the 5 and that's an 8. Both of that means that they're up interpolated probably. If this is eight, it means it's a five megapixel camera. And this one, if it's five, it was probably a two megapixel camera on the side. But you see that you've got a better camera. That's the bottom line. The Prime has a better camera on it. You're gonna get crisper images from that side uh, camera. Uh, the front camera is different. Let's close this and close that. But before we leave, I wanna show you, you double tap and double tap and double tap again, and that's how you zoom in. Double tap, double tap, double tap again, same thing. Pinch and zoom though, which is where you can use two fingers to move an image, not supported on the Thor 5 Pro. It is supported on the Prime. Now, if you work a lot with images and you wanna be able to see the dirt under your fingernail, you've got a lot more range with the Prime than you do with the Thor 5 Pro. You also have the bigger camera there. As far as front cameras go, for doing the uh, basic selfies and whatnot, oh, here I go, I gotta check if I comb my hair. I don't think I did, oh well. You guys don't mind, right? Let's just get back out of here, get back into camera, and switch our camera around. Okay, now I'm really bright, so bright it's washing out on the, uh, the, uh, the, the filming camera here on the Thor 5 Pro, and I'm pretty sure that's because on this one, it forces brightness to the maximum. I can't dim it down. This one, it allows the brightness to be what you've set on the watch. Another little subtle difference. I'm just going to take some random pictures, and I'm going to bring those pictures up to show you details. Uh... 1080 by 1920 on this one, and 1920 by 2560 on this one. Your front-facing camera is higher resolution on the Thor 5 Pro. Interesting. That's probably a 2 megapixel camera on this one, and maybe a 1.3 or something like that on this one. Uh, so your selfies are going to be... Well, they're going to be what they are. This looks like it's taking a thin, long one, like for video, and this is a little bit wider. And video is another whole story um, on both of them, but um, mostly what we want to talk about now for your decision-making is camera resolution and capabilities, and I think we've covered that. hope that's enough for you. Okay, what else? 
layout well they're pretty much the same you come down here you get a circle you've got uh, primary icons that you can work with a big date and your power level and everything different color scheme going on uh, you got different type of layout here slightly your location services your bluetooth all of that's in different places um airplane mode was over here whether you're uh got your your sim card in or your tethered is all there uh, other than that your cleanup is pretty much the same you've got the built-in music player on it and you've got your weather information in your location that shows on here as well so all of that's the same then you've got your notifications over here you've got your apps over here and remember now this one has the ability to do that fancy bubble thing for um, displaying your apps which is in your app list style for bubble and when we come back out of here and go into it you're in the apple kind of a bubble layout some people really like that in fact enough people really like that that they uh when it was taken away they got all upset about it and uh it was put back on okay and then this one's going to be in a uh, arc or circle with the time right in the middle. So those are the two alternate ways of displaying apps. If that's a critical thing for you, there's another decision point as a possibility. But all in all, um, weight about the same size. This one is definitely larger. So let's take a, another look. I'm about average, I would say, for a guy. Um, and it's almost getting too big for me, in my opinion. Uh, it's relatively thick. Uh, but it's a good solid watch. The band is nice and flexible. It's going to fit really well. In fact, it's got this little pin thing that when you go on, uh, put it on and, and lock it in with the tabs here, it's not going to fly out on you, which is kind of a nice feature. This is definitely more dressy. It's a little bit overall smaller watch. Mm-hmm. And, um leather type of a band so it's going to have a bit more of a dressy appeal to it uh, but they're both basically doing the same thing then there's the charging methods dock wire yep the prime uses a specialized dock and i do mean specialized it looks similar to a dock that appears on a couple of other of cospet's uh, watches but it's not it's curved here not straight and so the pins have to be curved and it sits right in the dock. It's magnetic. It uh, holds on pretty good. You hook up a standard USB, micro USB wire to it, and that's how you charge it. You just got to make sure you set it in there right and it falls into position. Drawback from this is you got to have the dock with you if you're going to be out and about uh, thinking you're going to need to charge it before you get back to your primary location where your dock lives. Also, it only comes with one dock, and it's pretty hard to get a second one, although I think there are ways. Uh, if any of you have links to where you can buy another um, dock for the Prime, let us know. We'll definitely put it in the show notes. Um, but that's it. You've got a dock. The uh, Thor 5 Pro has the standard four-pin wire with a twist, literally with a twist. Check it out. It does not go down. It's reversed. Most other watches that use a four pin connector with magnetic uh, connection will hang off of the watch in this direction, but not so with this one and all the others that have that little flat tire in the same class, which is like the Janus and the, um, the Cospet Vision and the X360 and all of those things, the wire, oops, <laughs> comes off of the other side i've never broken one yet folks not from dropping them but you guys i know it just like fingernails on a chalkboard to see that so if you have multiple watches that use this kind of thing which i doubt many of you do but some of you are collectors like me be very careful you get the right watch with the right wire it needs to come off when it's upside down to the left if you accidentally put the wrong wire on here and the pins are reversed and the watch is on, it'll immediately turn off. I haven't fried one, but I have hooked them up wrong. Same thing if you use this wire on a different watch than this, and it's connected wrong as well. I don't know why they decided to switch, but they have. And so um, 
That's a drawback in that it's not standardized wire, but a nice benefit is you can buy extras of these. Uh, make sure you get the right polarity, right, if you do. And then you could have one in your car, you could have one at work, you could have one in your pocket for goodness sakes and take it anywhere you want to. So I like the idea of the charging wire over the dock, but it's your choice and that's how they're charged. And now one last thing I want to show you and get it set up for that. Okay, I've got both watches on one arm. Are you ready? A lot of folks are concerned about how long does it take for them to light up when you twist them. A little bit faster, but the angle's a little bit off. Let's try that again. Let's see if I can get them just right for the wrap up. And here, all right, the winner is the Prime. It's milliseconds faster, but it definitely goes on, <clears throat> on, I didn't twist it hard enough, I don't think, that time. Let's try one more try. And there you go. Okay, so are you, are you ready for the big final answer? My choice in watch, if I were going to pick one of these two, and I, I'm sitting on a deserted island, which I pretty much am, and I, need, <laughs> I needed one smartwatch, which would it be? I'd take the Prime. Uh, I, it's got the things that I really like about it, and um, it's a little bit larger screen, better happening with the image control, larger cameras. Um, both of them are removable bands. Uh, just, it's a, I really like it. Uh, this is not a bad watch. It's going to fit well for a lot of folks. By the way, they're on their stock watch faces now. This one's flipping out because I haven't pushed the button. Um, this one uh, is, is, is in that mode that is um, on a longer timeout right now. So there we go. This has the flat tire. I'm not really keen on that. It's not a major thing for me, but, but the fact that this doesn't is a big winning factor for me as well. Um, I do like these bands, but this is okay. Yeah, 9.5 out of 10, 9 out of 10. Uh, that'd be my rating on it. Yours could be totally different. It all depends on what you're looking for in a watch. And now you know what's there. So the last thing, whichever one you decide or a different one, please consider using the links that we have in our show notes here on our YouTube channel. That's the whole impetus behind getting these things in for review. So after you've watched this stuff, if you found it helpful, um, if you're inclined to support us, uh, please just use the link to get over to wherever you're going, Banggood or Geek Buying or directly to the manufacturer, whatever link we've got there for you. Explore through that one and pick it up if you're interested, and that'll help us out here. We got a lot more coming. 2020 is around the corner, unless you're watching this already in 2020. <laughs> it's a big year ahead. I mean, look at where we are at the technology at the end of 2019. Can you imagine where we'll be a year from now? Wow. All right. Looking forward to the journey together, and we'll see you again soon. Thank you so much for watching.